Hello? My dog is attacking my family. Your dad is attacking your family? <laughs> no, my dog <laughs> What happens in a young person's mind when they know they've been caught for something terrible? Today, we will discuss the cases where teenagers who did horrible things face the moments of getting caught. It's about seeing what happens when they can't escape. We'll examine their feelings, what happens next, and how the law deals with them. Let's move to the first tragic case, a young life who lost his youth and destroyed his future. Daniel Bever. In a small, peaceful town, something unexpected and shocking happened in a way nobody thought possible. Daniel James Beaver called the police for help because his two older brothers were causing chaos in his house and hurting everyone. Hello? My dad is attacking my family. Your dad is attacking your family? No, my dad <laughs> But soon after the call started, Daniel screamed and begged to be saved, and the call suddenly ended. The police got there fast and saw a very shocking scene that covered the whole house, and they could hear a weak call for help coming from inside. The call for help was made by 13-year-old Crystal Beaver. Sadly, everyone else in the house was gone, except for a two-year-old named Autumn. Crystal, who was still alive, told the police that her brothers had been very interested in large-scale harm for over a year. One of these surviving Bever children, a 13-year-old girl, saying her brothers were fascinated by masks for at least a year. The police then heard noises near the back door and found Robert and Michael Beaver, the people who did this. They were all dirty and smiling as though they were happy with their actions. I was hoping maybe you could kind of just go back at the beginning when all this started and kind of tell me what happened. Uh, a couple months ago, yeah, we started talking about rampage and stuff like that. So okay. I didn't take it seriously at first, but then he started buying like a body armor and stuff. Where did he buy body armor from? eBay and Amazon. Robert was laughing and told the police that hurting more than one person made him feel like a god. Sadly, the video of Robert talking to the police was not shared with everyone, but the video of Michael helps us understand why these boys did something so terrible. Robert's room was full of things like big knives, hunting knives and sharp daggers. It looks like they had been gathering all these things for many months. When their sister Crystal told their mum about it, their mum thought it was just normal boy behaviour and said there was nothing to be worried about. But she was very mistaken. The guns were where did he start buying guns from? Um, he bought them online. I think the website's like Bud's Gun Shop and it's all right. And he bought two blocks, two block 41. And um, and a shotgun, I forget, it's like a moss boot, I think. Oh. Then he bought, I think it was like 250 shotgun rounds okay. on eBay. And then I think he bought close to a thousand rounds for the clocks. Wow, okay. And where was he supposed to pick those? By the ammunition, it was being shipped to the house. Having knives and big knives was one thing, but having guns and more than a thousand bullets was something much more serious. So, when they ordered these to their house, they made sure their parents weren't there when they arrived. But why did they need so many weapons? It turns out that the brothers had a much bigger plan. The two boys often stayed up late, talking and making plans. Tell me more about making plans and what you guys talked about. Making plans real plotted. Every night, so you know. Why did he want to do it? Because he just, like, he says he hates everyone he thinks society is pointless. So he wanted to, like, beat, um, beat the like, amount of other famous people like Colin Bond and uh, James Egan Holmes. So did you guys have a goal? Do you have a number? He just wanted, I think he wanted to, 50. Okay. Oh, yeah. When they found out they both were interested in hurting people, they decided there was no going back. The boys felt close to each other because of how they lived. Their parents, April and David Beaver, were not nice to them. They were taught at home and told not to talk to other kids. This meant they were alone with their thoughts a lot, and what they thought about the outside world was just what they imagined. You picked a date, you said. Yeah, which was yesterday. Yesterday night was the date. So How'd you, you pick the date? Um, with Egg of all the number the packages and stuff would be out. Because, you know, all the ammunition, he didn't want them to see that. And so we went to live at the house first. Okay. And then wait for all the packages to show up over the weekend. Um, and then we'd take the economy to have our state with the guns and that. The terrible action started with Crystal walking into their room and seeing them putting on body armor and holding knives. Michael tricked her into coming closer to his computer and then Robert cut her throat from behind. And so she fell down and started screaming. Yeah, well, I kept staring. Oh, I kind of freaked out because, you know. And then my mom came in and she started yelling, call the police, get dad. And then we came over and started attacking her. So he your mom with the same knife? Yep, same knife. 
And where did he start? Her. I think in the neck too. Meanwhile, Crystal managed to get up and tried to run out the door to escape, but Michael ran after her and pulled her back inside. She's still alive? Yeah, she was still screaming. And then that's about the time Dad came down. They got a little bit of a fight, um, but then eventually whoever got him down, you know, I think he could. Did he cut his throat too? After that, Daniel was also hurt badly. He was stabbed 21 times in his back, shoulder and chest. The last two, Christopher, who was six, and Victoria, were hiding. But Michael tricked them into coming out by pretending that Robert was attacking him too. Then the brothers hurt them badly until they couldn't survive. During his talk with the police, Michael blamed Robert a lot. He even said he was just there, watching Robert do everything, and that he only joined because he knew Robert would do it, and he wanted to stay on Robert's good side. But Robert was very open in his talk with the police police, making it clear that Michael was more involved than he first said. I, I didn't think anyone, anyone, I couldn't do it, so I was going to let him, like, be one. Yeah, you should somebody in the neck. And I mean, you know, I just kind of... How do you feel about what you've done now? I, I didn't like it to admit it. So I, I mean, how do you feel about your mother? You watched her get stabbed, you, you put yourself, and you watched her get all over the place and scream. How does that make you feel? When it came time for their trial, neither brother had much chance. Michael tried to say he was not guilty because he wasn't thinking clearly, but it didn't work. In the end, both of them were given the punishment of staying in prison for their whole lives with no chance to leave. If you're finding these cases insightful and want to stay updated with more, please take a moment to like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Now, if you think this case is terrifying, then let's discuss the next case of Nolan Rosen, who also faced the law. Nolan Rosen. On a normal day, May 2nd, 2023, someone found a lone bullet on the floor of a school cafeteria. This caused the school to go into lockdown. Everyone was scared because the police had to check each student carefully, knowing there could be danger. What's about a bullet you found on the ground, right? Don't you worry. Oh, God. Something, somebody find something you know about? Because I had a bullet in my pocket, but it wasn't like, it's not like I'm planning anything. Oh, okay. I dropped Wait, it on so the ground. You, you, okay. But I don't know, I'm not allowed to bring a bullet. The situation became more intense when a student named Nolan Rosen came to the police with a strange question. He said he lost a bullet from his pocket. Even though he said he didn't mean any harm, his words made the officers suspicious. If I was a school I wouldn't tell you. No, I didn't. Today's the energy food, you know, they got to clean everything safe. That's right. Uh, uh, just uh, Let me ask you this while I got you right here. Just be honest with me, you didn't bring any gun to school, did you? No. That's the only one you only had one round? Yeah. Okay. Got I wouldn't like bring a gun in the school. No, okay, I know. But That's not my intention. You know I gotta ask though, right? There was a was there a bullet found though? There's gotta be the reason we're doing all this. And I looked it up. It said there's no statute for bringing up like there's no law against bringing a bullet to the school. Okay. Like you know. Nolan tried to make the situation seem less serious. He talked to the police about whether it's legal to have bullets in school and shared his worries about school sh He said this fear is why he keeps a weapon at home for safety. All right, just turn around, face over here real quick. Put your hand on that table for me. Oh, I got more bullets. I got two. Okay, don't put your hand in your pocket. Just keep your hands on the table. Just put them on the table. the table. Just put them on the table for me real quick, okay? So I'm going to have to search you. Yeah, I know. That'd be nice. So you had two bullets in this one? Literally, if I thought I was doing anything wrong, I wouldn't bring I, I got you. You just know on today's day, you can never be too safe, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. especially in a school environment. That's all. And this is your book bag, the black one. The one I'm going to search. Right there. Okay, that's all of them? Yeah. It's right, so I do got to continue searching, that's all. Is that a really half on there? This up. 22 rifles, not even an assault. Yeah. It's not even an yeah. assault. Right, right. 12, 15, 23. Are these from a range? Yeah. No, I have a Henry repeating rifle. And I uh, kind of just use it as like a thing to like comfort me a little bit. At home or? Yeah. I don't like, I'm not, there's no ill, I have no ill intention. When the police looked more into it, they found that Nolan's actions did not match his words about being scared for school safety. He seemed too calm, which made the police want to check more. They found out that Nolan did not just bring a bullet, but he also had a loaded gun. He left it in his car, but this made everyone much more worried. What started as a check for one bullet turned into a big worry about why Nolan brought a gun to school. I know why it would raise a concern, but I'm not like... 
I'm really scared about that stuff like school shooters do. I'm like very, uh, it like, makes me anxious too that anyone can just walk into school and shoot it up. So I'm like, you, I'm- Do you worry about that? Yeah, I worry about that stuff a lot sometimes. Yeah, of course. Well, not of course. Like, I don't carry it all the time, but I just literally carried it in my car. Like, I don't bring it in the school. Is there a gun in your car right now? Yeah. Let's go out. So, you, you'll you stay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, they're in my back. It's there... not an assault rifle. It's a, literally a 22 Henry repeating rifle. I didn't, I didn't ask. For a small game. I just wanted to know if you have one there. The situation became very serious when the officers found a gun in Nolan's car. The gun was the kind used for hunting small animals, which was very different from the safe school setting. The fact that Nolan had this weapon, along with what he had said earlier, made things look bad. The officers had to decide what to do next. They were dealing with a student who had brought a gun to school, which was a big problem. In a school office, where everyone was tense, the officers wanted to know why Nolan brought a gun to school when he said he didn't plan to use it. Watch that. Right here. Just yeah, just just leave it right there for now. Yeah. It's basically like a, just a 22 rifle, right? Like something yeah. you shoot rabbits with. Rabbit or a squirrel. Yeah. How to check if it's loaded? We'll we'll check it. Put it in there, I think. Yeah. I'm wondering if you gotta um, like back to uh, to get inside. It doesn't... This is how you um, yeah like rack chamber it. He's 18. Oh, you got a little. Yeah, he's 18, so. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. What the. I guess the higher ups want to do. They want to take him out of here in cuffs? Absolutely. Yeah. You verify that he's 18? We looked on the. Uh, yeah, I can triple check, but. Is he a senior? He's a junior. 18 year old junior? Yeah. Those are usually the ones that Nolan, in a simple way, said he brought the gun because it looked cool and it made him feel better, thinking there was no clear rule against it. But he was wrong. Ohio law clearly says you can't bring guns to school. This law is there to stop the kind of scare that happened because of what Nolan did. I don't bring the rifle because I'm like assuming I'm going to have to use it. I just bring it because, first of all, it looks cool. And second of all, it's like a comfort thing. It's before I brought the gun, I like, uh, I'm pretty sure like I'm, I was allowed to bring it. Like, I don't okay. think there was anything saying I'm not allowed to bring it. Okay, I got you. But I know, I'm, I know it's like a- Are you a senior? In the modern age, this is bad. Are you a senior? Uh, yeah, no, junior. Junior, okay, how old are you? Um, 17. Gotcha. 18, sorry. Nolan tried to explain why he brought the gun by talking about videos where showing a gun stopped fights. He thought just having a gun could keep him safe from danger. But an officer, who knows a lot about self-defense and police work, told him it's not that simple. The officer said that just having a gun doesn't always make you safe in real life situations. I just see a lot of videos where having the gun prevents like altercations. Like online videos yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, a different outcome and stuff. Like, there's one guy who was like 200 pounds bigger than this guy and he comes up to his car and he's like, I want to fight you. It looks like he's about to rip him out of his car and the guy just pulls out a gun and the guy turns around and walks the other way and it's like, that's all it is. He didn't even like do anything just because he saw the gun. He knows it's like, he can't think it's over. Like there's no point. So, so that, that could be a case, but another thing, so I'm a subject control instructor, so I teach all the police officers basically how to fight like martial arts and stuff like yeah. that. You've heard of this 21 foot rule, right? If somebody has a knife within 21 feet of you, it's, they're, they're more dangerous than the guy with the gun because they can clear that distance quickly. Oh, wow. But everything... Come with me. Even though Nolan tried to explain his actions, he had to face the consequences. The school does not allow weapons at all, so they decided to suspend him and suggested that he should be expelled. This situation became more than just breaking the rules. It caused a big problem when the whole school had to go into lockdown because of what Nolan did. Well, surely you can imagine um, having a gun on school property is um, a major issue. So I am suspending you for 10 days with a recommendation for expulsion. Since you are also on a 504 plan, um, somebody from the special education department will be reaching out to you because we're going to have to hold what's called a manifestation determination meeting. Um, but at this point, it is a 10-day suspension with a recommendation for expulsion for um, weapons, specifically a gun and disruption of misconduct. I have to go fill out the rest of the people. I didn't disrupt anything. The whole school was on lockdown, buddy. I'd call that about as big of a disruption as you could have. All right, sorry. Well, I, the, the problem wasn't bringing the gun. Almost, I dropped the bullet. That was the problem. 
Nolan's situation got even worse when the police decided to arrest him. Even though he tried to say that what he did wasn't against the law, the officers told him he was wrong. Nolan thought there wasn't a law that said you can't bring a gun to school, but he was mistaken. The law is very clear, and just because Nolan didn't know or agree with it, it doesn't change the trouble he's in now. The officers told Nolan that his problem wasn't just about breaking school rules, he broke the law of the state. When Nolan tried to argue, the officers were clear that what he believed didn't change the law. We talked to our prosecutor. Um, he's got a guy that makes the law decisions, all right? Um, it is against the law to bring a gun into what's called the safety zone or a school, right? That's subjective. What is subjective? But you consider it like a safety zone. Okay. So now's not going to be the time to contest it right now, okay? So basically what I'm telling you is we're going to end up charging you, okay? And you're 18 years old. There's no law against that. Bringing a gun on the school property, there's no law. Like, there's no statute. I'm, I'm telling you there it's is. It's a policy, not a law. No, there's a state law in Ohio. There's no, also there is another. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Here's what we're going to do. Okay, we're not going to debate what it is or isn't. We know what we have. We have violation of law, right? I don't uh, think there is a violation of law. Okay, you can think that, and we do arrest people that think they aren't in violation of laws. That does happen, and you have the right to, to believe that. You believe whatever you want, want to believe. This is a newer generational problem. This is not like a problem that they had like back in the day. This might be like your first time dealing with a situation like this in your whole career. So I don't think you can just arrest me like that. But we are arresting you. If we thought that there was an inkling that we were wrong, if there was any gray area, we would, wouldn't do it. We wouldn't do it. We respect your rights, okay? As a person. Stand up. Put your hands behind your back. You said I can wait your behind your back. In the end, Nolan was arrested and charged with not handling a gun properly, having a dangerous weapon in a school, and causing panic. He said he was not guilty, but the trouble had already happened. As we wrap up these cases, it's clear that the events at the school on that fateful day highlight a complex intersection of youth, legality and safety. These cases serve as a critical reminder of the importance of understanding the laws and the consequences of our actions. What are your thoughts on this situation? Share your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, stay informed and stay engaged.